we have our infinitely long so length of this wire is infinite it goes from infinity negative infinity to positive infinity it's an infinitely long wire and it's a thin thin walled wire so basically current is distributed over this semicircular surface and this current is going from say minus infinity to say positive infinity and it's distributed over the surface it's hollow so this conducting walls these wall walls which are conducting this current are basically thin they are in the shape of a half cylinder and find magnetic field at particular point C so this diagram this question can be thought of as in this particular way so I am basically looking at this wire from here this is my eye basically so this appears to be something like this and current is going into the plane we have to find net magnetic field due to this current carrying wires at a particular point say C so how do we go about it basic idea is simple we divide this wire we, we divide this semicircular wires into infinite amount of thin thin wires we can say there is a single wire this particular wire this is infinitely long wire and this is this is this is carrying current say i upon this we have we can think of this as a small wire a thin wire carrying current di and we need to find magnetic field due to this small wire at c so magnetic field due to this thin wire at c is going to be in this particular direction this is going to be db why because if we have an infinitely long wire which carries current i and we need to find magnetic field at a point a then we can join this a with this wire this is going to be a perpendicular distance let's say this is r then you put your thumb in the direction right right thumb in the direction of current and the curl of your fingers gives the direction of magnetic field that is going to be something like this so we can say magnetic field due to this thin wire this this small wire is going to be something like this let's say this wire it's is at some angle theta and it's sub subtending some angle d theta at this center so we can actually divide this whole wire uh, whole semicircular part into small small wires and find magnetic field due to each wire at point c and do the vector sum of those magnetic fields you get the net magnetic field due to this whole semicircular thin wires infinite amount of semi thin wires distributed over the semicircle so now this integral does not look nice what we can do is we can take a symmetric element again at angle theta subtending angle d theta at the center due to this red thin wire we can see magnetic field current is into the plane magnetic field is going to be in this particular direction such that this angle is 90 and magnitude is going to be again db so we can say net magnetic field due to this red part and this green part due to this red part and this green part is going to be in this particular direction and we can say if this angle is theta then this angle is theta if this angle is theta then this angle is theta and if this angle is theta then this angle is theta if a line makes angle theta 
with horizontal a line perpendicular to that is gonna make angle theta with vertical that's the basic idea behind this and we can say net magnetic field due to this green part and this red part these symmetric parts is going to be db or rather 2 db cos theta towards left this is your magnetic field due to this is db1 this is due to two symmetric parts this is towards left this is your net magnetic field due to these two parts at C <laughs> so this is going to be nothing but 2 db now we have to find this particular magnitude this is mu naught i upon 2 pi r mu naught di upon 2 pi r now what's your di your current i is distributed over this particular length your current i is distributed over this whole semicircular width or this this arc this arc length is basically your pi r current i is distributed over this whole part so we can say di is nothing but i upon pi r into small arc length that's going to be r d, d, d theta that's going to be r d, d theta so you can cancel this particular r and you can put this value of db in here so this comes out to be this db1 comes out to be 2 db 2 mu naught i d theta upon pi into my 2 pi r into my cos theta and you integrate all these parts you are basically adding parallel vectors towards left so that's going to be nothing but this particular integral and after that this angle theta should go from this angle theta should go from 0 0 to 90 why is 0 to 90 why not minus 90 to plus 90 because we are already taking care of the contributions of symmetric elements so it's going to be 0 to 90 it's not going to be minus 90 to plus 90 it would be minus 90 to plus 90 if I were only integrating db cos theta so that's going to be your answer